Hey everybody, Raymond here. Welcome back to another edition of Roll of Digital. A few weeks ago, our family was fortunate enough to head down and uh, spend a few days in Clearwater, Florida. So I spent an afternoon just walking up and down the beach, uh, trying to take pictures of whatever I found was interesting and you know, kind of told the best story of being at the beach. So before we start this, I want to do a little bit of an exercise and I would love it if you were to just kind of close your eyes, you know, nice and soft, take a deep breath, and then just think about the beach. Think about the beach. What do you think of when you think beach? It's, it's relaxing, it's water, it's, you know, maybe playing in the sand a little bit. Okay, you can open up your eyes now. And I didn't want to do any of that. And I was already getting enough photos of that stuff of my kids. What I wanted to do here was something uh, totally different. So I wanted to get photos of the beach without it being specifically the beach. So for my little photo walk here, I really focused on three things. I was about to do four, but three things here. And that was uh, the people of the beach, the birds of the beach, and then the cars of the beach as well. So all the photos that I take are kind of, um, you know, revolve around those, those key elements right there. So if you've seen either of the other two videos that I've done, uh, one here in my town, it was kind of like the downtown area, and then the second one at a rest stop in New Mexico, uh, then you'll kind of know how these go, but essentially I just go out and I try to zone out take some photos of what I find is interesting, and then also I film a little like behind the scenes stuff with my cell phone. So if you don't know, like my background is in wedding photography, so when I got the X100V, one thing that I loved was the built-in neutral density filter, which allowed me to do a lot more slow shutter type photos and really emphasize motion. So it's fun because I've noticed that a lot with uh, some of these photos is that that's something that I've been trying to do. You know, I go down, I really try to emphasize that with the cars because really like all of the, uh, all of the vehicles, I don't really care what vehicle it is that I'm looking at, it's just that what I'm highlighting here in Clearwater is that like it's a busy place. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of motion going on. There's a lot of activity. And that to me is why I'm using the slow shutter to, to emphasize that and bring it out. Plus look at this photo. I love this guy. He's, he's like not even looking at the road. Meanwhile, his passenger here is almost like scared to death <laughs> to be in the passenger seat. He doesn't even care. So if you've never been to Clearwater, it's a very uh, popular beach destination in Florida here in the United States. Uh, so when you think about it, there's obviously the ocean, or technically it's the Gulf, there's, so there's a body of water, right? Then there's a beach area where people hang out and they, you know, go in the water and that's typically where people hang out. But on the other side of that beach is uh, like a long, it's not a boardwalk because it's not made out of wood. Is a boardwalk made out of wood? So I guess technically, yeah, this is, uh, this, so yeah, <laughs> there's a boardwalk and you know, there's little shops uh, and there's lots of activity going on. So this is kind of where I spent the majority of my time since I didn't want to just get photos of the water or the beach since I already had plenty of those with the kids. I wanted to focus on the, the activity element uh, and, the, and the human aspect of, of, of being here in this location at this point in time. We can all agree that most people don't just carry around a, you know, a mirrorless or a DSLR or a nicer camera around with them, is that they just usually bring out their phones. So to me, whenever I go on vacation, whenever somebody pulls out a phone to take a photo, I love to take a photo of that, of them taking a photo. I guess one, because it feels um, relatively new, I guess. It <laughs> But back to the, <laughs> the point of that, which is that I always love taking pictures of people taking photos. So, you know, you get photos when, you, when you're when you able to get out on the pier where people, you know, get together. Uh, you know, we got people taking pictures of the, uh, of the beach here just to show how nice it is. It's funny because it's like, it's the same photo that everybody else is going to take, but to everybody, like it means 
means something different to them, I suppose. Now, on the flip side of the coin, others are just going to be standing back and just watching it, like, as life goes by, as the scene plays out in front of them. It makes me wonder, what are they thinking about? Especially when somebody's alone like this, uh, you know, I never, I never know what's going on in somebody's head. You know, it's a busy day. There's lots of people and all these people are kind of like with somebody. And then here's this person alone. You know, what are they thinking? We don't know, but it's not up to me to decide. It's, it's, it's up to you. It's up to the viewer to decide what the story is that you see in your mind. The facts almost don't even matter in a photograph like this. It's all about what's the story that you can tell yourself. One thing I love about Fuji is being able to shoot in so many different, uh, you know, film simulations within the Fuji cameras. When you shoot in JPEG, it just makes for a nice, clean image, uh, and the colors I find are beautiful. But when I bring them into Lightroom, there's still a little bit of work that I want to do to kind of put my signature on it, and that is why I use uh, just a base preset. So for me, uh, this is the preset that I use. As you can see, I mean, the photo's not bad but it's also, it doesn't pop, right? And that's why I use, uh, this is one of my favorite presets that I got. I, I named, I renamed it my 2020 import preset, uh, which maybe I should change to 2021. Um, but this and 51 other presets are available in my 52 free Lightroom preset download for you to, you know, give your photos a shot. Whether you like them in camera or not, you know, bring them into Lightroom and just playing around with them a little bit with the, you know, 52 total Lightroom presets uh, can be a fun and a, a creative exercise for you to discover something that you find interesting. So again, if you're interested, the link to download those 52 free Lightroom presets are in the description below. And as you can see, they work for mobile too. So at the end of the day, what happened? Like, did I get great photos? Am I happy with these? Am I gonna print them? Am I gonna put them on my wall? You know, maybe there's a few, maybe a photo like this. Maybe I will, who knows? One of the things that I love about photography is that since it's, uh, since it's my profession, sometimes uh, when I go out and take photos, I think about it like in a certain mode and it's hard for me to um, be, feel free, I guess, because at a wedding, I know that the photos that I take are going to be going to somebody. So I have to shoot them with a level of, um, with a level of degree that they're going to be something that somebody's going to want to look at. You know what I mean? Um, so when I go out, I just shoot for myself and I just tell myself I can delete every single one of these photos after the fact. Try to shoot with feeling rather than um, to shoot for an end goal. So all of that to say, uh, I did get some photos that I really like and they make me feel, you know, of the beach. But again, at the end of the day, the photos that I took here are gonna remind me of this vacation. They're gonna remind me of this time spent together with my family and, you know, the unique location that Clearwater, Florida is. And for me, I mean, that makes this entire photo walk worth it. This photo right here like really makes me mad because uh, as I said, I really wanted to get a photo that was gonna get the beach and car culture kind of together. I come up to this uh, crosswalk and I look off into the distance and here comes, you know, a new Corvette. And I thought this is gonna be it. I'm just gonna wait right here, get my composition ready so that when it comes by, I'll just take the photo and I'll get it. But this is a great example of me wanting a photo so bad that it's not even a good photo. It looks terrible. This light pole looks terrible. I could have, you know, changed up my composition more to be able to get a better photo, but I wanted a photo of a car and the beach so bad that I just took this and now I'm like, I'm happy with it. Like, I'm, like now that I look at it, like it kind of makes me a little upset. I should have just taken two more seconds to realize all of this extra space between the car and the edge of the frame while there was none back here between the car and the tree. And that, that, that along with the uh, uh, speed limit sign right there, if those aspects I had taken care of, this would be a much better photo. So I wanna challenge you. I want you to just go out into your town or even just like around your house and just take photos that 
you don't even care about, that you think these might be garbage and that's okay because I can just delete them. It's no big deal. Because when you find that you're able to shoot more with feeling, uh, it'll be easier for you to connect with photos than it will if you're trying to shoot uh, for an end result. When you can shoot with just with just emotion and feeling and you can kind of block the rest of the world out, you'll, you'll realize how free photography can be and how enjoyable it is at that point as well. And if you do that, I wanna invite you into the Beginner Photography Podcast Facebook community. Come on in, share a photo of yours, uh, and we'll talk about it because this is what photography is all about. It builds community and it helps build you up creatively. Thank you.